Information shared on the following program is for general information purposes only. It does not constitute legal, tax, investment, or other advice, nor is it intended to recommend any particular investments, products, or financial instruments. Always seek advice from your financial advisor, attorney, or accountant with regard to investment, legal, or tax questions. Do you suffer from big hat, no cattle? Stay tuned. Welcome to the only show in the country dedicated to helping savers worry less about money, The Worry-Free Retirement, with your host, five-time author and fiduciary, the money missionary himself, Tony Walker. How would you define rich? Well, hello and welcome to the Worry-Free Retirement. I am Tony Walker. we got an interesting show today, and I think you're going to enjoy this whole theme of Big Hat, No Cattle. You might be thinking, I don't know what that means. Well, you will by the time this show's over with. But we are dealing with the term of perception. How much money do you have? How are you going to use it? Do you feel rich? Uh, What is the definition of rich? Well, you know, we can think about that. And I think from uh, just a pure secular standpoint, when we think of being rich, or signs of being rich, that would be the big hat syndrome, but would be having a big home, somebody that has a very, very nice home. For instance, we might assume that they must be rich. Uh, maybe we have uh, we drive by a house, and we see four or five nice cars out front, really nice expensive cars, and you think, well, there must be some rich people. Then you might uh, go into somebody's house, and you look around, and you go, gosh, look at all this expensive art and beautiful furniture and window treatments. They must be rich. Uh, Also, you could maybe think somebody's rich who does a lot of extravagant travel. Uh, I know of people that travel all over the world and travel regularly. I mean, nice trips. And we might assume that those people are rich. So how much money you have, how much possessions you have, that would be the cattle. Okay, we're going somewhere with this, folks. How much you possess is that's kind of how we measure ourselves in terms of rich. Now, Webster's defines rich as follows, several definitions, but I like this one. Having an abundance of possessions, especially material wealth, or having a high quality or value of quality of things, being well supplied or endowed. And finally, here's a good one for today's theme of big hat, no cattle, rich as magnificently impressive. So richness, if that's such a word, is really relative, though, when you think about it. I cover this in my book, The Worry for Retirement. You don't believe me? Just head on down to a third world country, maybe show up with uh, some pictures of some very modest homes that we would consider modest in our country and show those photos to somebody who maybe is living in a shack on the side of a mountain, you know, and that person's going to look at that picture and probably say your $100,000 home or whatever it's worth in Kentucky, they might say, boy, those people are rich. Look at that house. Uh, So again, it's a relative term. Uh, in our in the United States, that same house we might consider very, very modest at best. So one part of the world considers something very rich. Another part of the world considers it not. All right. But again, in a third world country, they're going to peg that as rich when we might not think it's very impressive. So after working with thousands of savers all these years, 33 plus years I've been in the financial trenches, here's what I've discovered about money and how much money you have on paper, right? We're going to talk about money on paper versus money in your pocket. The money on paper is the big hat. The money in your pocket is the cattle. Now, the only one who truly knows how rich you are is the one that has a game plan to use and enjoy the money they have. Because let's face it, If you have, I don't care how much cattle you have, you could have hundreds and hundreds of heads of cattle. That's our measurement for rich, let's say. But if you don't ever use the cattle, really all you've had all your life is a big hat because without enjoying the money, again, the worry for retirement, the philosophy is what's the point of having money if you're not going to enjoy it? You know, uh, years ago, this whole big hat, no cattle thing, I didn't think of it. It was, a, it was a wonderful conference that I attended. And at this financial conference, ironically, they had this comedian that showed up. And that was the title of his message, Big Hat, No Cattle. In my book, Don't Follow the Herd, I kind of stole that and I talk about that. It's a great book, by the way. If you want to read a good book that's just written in layman's terms about money and some strategies you can do to protect more of your money, 
uh, order the book, Don't Follow the Herd. I think you'd be glad you did. But anyway, he talked about this whole thing, and his whole point was a lot of people that have the biggest hat are actually the ones that don't have any cattle. You may have known people like that. You know, They look like they have a lot of money. In our business, unfortunately, our business used to always say, fake it until you make it. Well, that's a terrible posture, but that's what they would tell people because – People would get in the financial services business, right? You, you get trained and you go out here and you call on people that usually have a lot more money than you. And what do people do? They usually run out and buy a nice car. They get in a nice suit and they drive around and they fake it until they make it and hopefully can make it long enough until they actually truly make it. But that would be the, the comedian's version of the big hat, no cattle syndrome. We're kind of taking it a different step here. So the problem is you whether you know it or not, if you've got money, let's say a lot of money in a 401k or a brokerage account, or maybe even a bank with low interest rates, or maybe even an annuity, it doesn't matter. Even if it looks like a lot of money on paper, it may not mean as much or be worth as much as you think. So the symbol of being rich is the hat, the 401k statement, the brokerage statement, that's the hat. But if you don't figure out a way to put food on the table, if you don't figure out a way to protect that money and put it in your pocket and use it, it's nothing more than a hat. Is all this kind of making sense? So my definition of rich, where we're going with the show today, my definition of rich is certainly to have plenty of money to live on. Don't get me wrong. You got to have money to live on. But in reality, I think the definition of rich is having enough money to live, but also living for today and enjoying the money. You know, what? It, again, what is the point of having a big hat and a lot of cattle and not using the cattle? And in the financial climate we have, we see this play out within all of these trillions of dollars locked up in 401k plans. Maybe you're feeling this way. You are kind of thinking, I've been putting all this money in these 401k plans. And Tony, even as I'm listening now, I don't have a game plan to get that money out, or I don't know what the costs are to get it out. So what is the cattle? What is the 401k that's represented by the cattle? Well, it's really represented by Wall Street. Their products of stocks and bonds and mutual funds and other investments that, quite frankly, in many cases, are full of risk and no game plan to use it. So while you might have several hundred thousand dollars in a 401k or maybe you're watching it, you've got millions, I don't know. The, pro the point is, if you don't have a game plan to use and enjoy and maximize that money, are you really rich, right? Well, years ago, what, where did all this start, Tony? Did people years ago have this big hat, no cattle syndrome? And I don't think they did. I go back to my grandfather all the time. I use him as an example because he didn't have a 401k. He retired the same year, 1978, that the 401k was enacted into law. So let's kind of go back in time. Prior to 1978, how did most people express their wealth? Where did they put their money? I'm talking about savers. Well, savers never put their money in the stock market. Uh, growth mutual funds were really just kind of coming on the scene. No, back then, the majority of people put their money in banks because interest rates were very high and guaranteed. Uh, they put their money in fixed interest annuities. Again, fixed annuities were guaranteed and paid good interest rates back then. A lot of them, I mean, a lot of people back then who were savers purchased municipal bonds because of the tax advantages. And again, good steady income, good steady form of cattle. <laughs> and of course, if you had municipal bond, they were tax efficient. But not so today. With the modern day 401k, or even if you have an IRA, 403b, it doesn't matter. It's all the same thing. Maybe you've rolled over your lump sum pension into something. It's a, what's called a qualified account. And the problem with these qualified accounts is not only are they in many cases locked up, but now you have all of these taxes. I call it the tax tumor that you're going to have to deal with. So you've gone from the safety and security of products like CDs, fixed annuities, municipal bonds, all these things everybody used to depend on, the cattle, right? And they needed, they could use the cattle but still protect the principal. That's not the case anymore. This money in these 401ks, in my view, is really not real money. And we're going to see this in the second segment. Whereas in the past, you put $100,000 in a CD, it paid 8 9%, whatever it paid. You didn't have to touch the principal and you could draw eight dollars $9,000. That was real money. That was money in your pocket, and that was money you could always go get on a protected basis. So, uh, give an example of this before we close out for this segment. It's kind of funny to think about this here. My father in law, I remember years ago, had an annuity. And when he bought that annuity, the interest rate on that annuity was 12%, and it was locked in for a guaranteed period of like 15 years or something. And I never will forget, he said this. He said, Tony, when I bought the annuity, I didn't think anything about it. That's what interest rates were. But when interest rates started plummeting and the insurance company had to honor that 12%, I remember him saying, 
I felt like I was rich. And I think what he meant was it's not that the annuity made him rich. It was that he felt like, hey, I'm actually kind of getting the use of my money. I'm getting a good return, and it's totally protected. Well, you can't get 12% nowadays, obviously, on a guaranteed basis. But I'm going to show you when we come back three different examples, all right, of people who are suffering from big hat, no cattle syndrome. One of these might sound like you, so you want to stay tuned. I'm Tony Walker. I'm going to get the whiteboard out. I'll be right back. As someone who loves golf, I've learned the hard way that owning the best set of clubs is worthless if you don't know how to swing them properly. Money is no different. Having the best financial clubs in the world doesn't get you anywhere if you don't know how to properly generate income for life. I'm financial advisor Tony Walker. Allow me to show you how to get the most out of your money. Log on to TonyWalkerFinancial.com and let's get started. Why worry about running out of money in retirement when you don't have to? Attend Tony Walker's next free educational workshop, Safeguarding Your Money During Turbulent Times. That's right, the author and creator of The Worry-Free Retirement, Tony Walker, will personally show you how to use, enjoy, and protect your hard-earned money by avoiding the five most common mistakes savers are making with their money and how to avoid them. This free one-hour workshop will begin promptly at 6 p.m. and is being offered at three different locations so you can choose the best location that suits your busy schedule. Louisville on April 23rd, Elizabethtown Tuesday, April 24th, and Bowling Green Thursday, April 26th. That's safeguarding your money during turbulent times with Tony Walker in Louisville Monday, April 23rd, Elizabethtown Tuesday, April 24th, and Bowling Green Thursday, April 26th. This workshop is free, but seating is limited and registration is required, so don't miss out. Log on now to TonyWalkerFinancial.com to register. That's TonyWalkerFinancial.com. Welcome back to the Worry-Free Retirement. I'm uh, reading over the book, The Great 401k Hoax by William Wallman. This is a really good book. Now, again, we're not here to bash the 401k, but Wallman is saying that it really was kind of a hoax, the way that the 401k was introduced and how Wally World came on the scene and started working with all these sabers. In fact, there's an interesting quote. He says on page 31, let's just put this up full screen here, and I'm have to look down and read this, but he says, after all, he's a talking about uh, Americans investing in 401ks. He says, after all, they were not lured into the market by any decision made solely on their own. They got their feet wet on Wall Street because their employer's defined benefit pension plans had disappeared or had been skinned back and the 401k had become the only viable option. So anyway, what we're talking about today is this concept of big hat no cattle. And I'm going to share with you three different versions of what we would call richness. In other words, each person has about 300000 in their 401k. They're all excited about it. That's great. Great savings. But we want to know what do they really have? How much cattle do they really have to enjoy? So what I'm going to do, I've got over here person A, person B, and person C. And the title is actually Count the Cost. You know, you think about any financial decision. One thing I've learned in doing finances so long is there is a cost with every financial decision. The key is, what's the least amount of cost? So there is nothing that's gonna just be perfect. Everything has some sort of cost, even if it's an opportunity cost. So we have to understand that. So basically we're using three different individuals. The first individual, the age is 55, okay? And in this example, the, the uh, 55 year old's big hat, he has 300,000 in his 401k plan. Now, I asked the cost because at 55, if I had a conversation with person A and said, hey, how much do you really have on paper? And he would say, well, obviously 300,000. I might say, well, that's fine. How much was it last month? Well, he might say, well, last month, Tony, it was 280 and uh, a year ago it was 320. So really what I would say is that's all on paper, right? Because you don't really know what that's worth because you haven't converted it to cash and put it in your pocket. And he might say, well, yeah, I'll get it out right now. And I'd say, no, you don't. The cost is because you're under 59 and a half, unless this was a former employer. That's why, by the way, if you've got a 401k from a former employer and it's just sitting there, please contact us. That thing needs to be moved into our process. Don't let it just sit there because if you're with a current employer and you want to move it, you can't. 
And this is kind of tricky. The government locks that thing up. You can't even move it out. So the cost is it's locked up in the plan. So the net amount of effect to you, the amount of cattle you're going to actually enjoy is we don't know because the plan is locked up. And many of you are trying to anticipate interest rates and what's it going to make. Who the heck knows, right? The second example I use is somebody will say in their mid 60s, whatever, we'll put uh, 65, okay? And the same thing, the 65 year old says, my big hat on paper is 300,000. And Tony, I was going to move money out. The problem is, uh huh, look here, just a few months ago, I had 320,000. So I might say, well, why don't you move the money out? Because he's saying, or she's saying, I want the market to go back up. Tony, that would be foolish. I just had 320,000 a few months ago. I'm gonna wait for it to come back up. So my question to them is, the cost is, number one, you can't get it out yet because you're waiting for it to get back to 320. The cost is, what if it went down? So what if it would go down? See where I'm going with this? So we really don't know. So again, we're back to big hat. We don't know how much cattle we have. All right. So you're saying, well, Tony, surely there's other examples of that. Okay, let's say person C, 68 years of age, all right? Person C, same kind of example, says, Tony, I have $300,000. But what I decided to do several years ago, I was worried that the market was at an all-time high. I moved it into a guaranteed fixed income fund that pays 1%. I haven't made a lot of money, but I haven't lost a penny. And I would say, amen, great. But if you're leaving it at 1% and there was something much better on a safer basis, gosh, we could put that in a fixed indexed annuity. Did you realize, now this won't happen all the time, past performance doesn't indicate future performance. We had several fixed indexed annuities last year that made 14%. And you say, well, is that that good, Tony? I thought the market went up 28. Yeah, but that 14% is locked in. Remember this fellow over here, he's already lost some money. So with a fixed indexed annuity, I'd rather take my chances. I'm not gonna lose any money with it. Why wouldn't you want the opportunity to make five, six, 14%? I mean, even if you make zero, at least zero is your friend, you won't lose anything. So we can show you how those products work. But in this case, I'm telling him, gosh, you're only making 1%. And he says, yeah, but that's fine, but I can get it out at any time because I'm not gonna have any risk. Great. So let's say we decide to take that out. He says, yeah, I'll just take it out. I say, what is the cost? The cost is if you yank any of this money out, I'm gonna put underneath here, that's the tax tumor. Remember, it's buried within your 401k or IRA. The government has first dibs on this money, folks. This isn't all your money. Talking about money on paper that's really not yours. So you would say, well, Tony, yeah, what are the taxes on that? That's a good point. I forgot about the taxes. Depends on how much you take out. Depends on what your other income is. And here's the real problem. It may be, I'm gonna estimate the taxes on that could easily be as much as $100,000. So talking about a lot of cattle that just ran out the chute and got away from you, that is a lot of money, folks. So what we're trying to explain here is we are interested in the money on paper. And that's what makes our process unique. It's a five-step process and it begins with clarifying your vision and providing you an assessment. Let me explain what's gonna happen. If you would like to go to TonyWalkerFinancial.com, you're gonna click on the Let's Get Started button. When that goes to our office, we will contact you to set up a no obligation appointment in either our Louisville or Bowling Green, Kentucky offices. Another question that's asked sometimes is, Tony, how do you get paid? How, how does all this work? Because you're offering all these free assessments. Well, we get paid very simply. We're a fiduciary, so it's all transparent. We'll show you exactly what the fees are. They're six tenths of 1% for a managed account, which is generally about a third of what a lot of people charge. Uh, in some cases, we've saved people thousands of dollars a year just in fees. The second way we're paid is through one-time commissions. Those commissions are filed with all the insurance departments throughout the states. Those commissions come from the sale of life insurance. We usually only work with guaranteed permanent insurance type contracts for life insurance. We can show you how to pass on more money tax-free at your death, try to mitigate that tax tumor that way. And then the second way we're paid is from commissions for the sale of fixed annuity products. We do not do variable annuity products. We only work with fixed interest and fixed indexed annuity products. So again, give us a try. There's no cost or obligation. Log on to TonyWalkerFinancial.com. Click on that Let's Get Started button. And by the way, we do have a workshop coming up in Bowling Green in Louisville. It's entitled, 
how to be worry-free in retirement, you can register on the website as well there. One of our few workshops, we're only doing them quarterly now, so I encourage you to get to one of those workshops. I'll be there in person, and I'll be also taking questions from the audience there following the workshop. Again, that's TonyWalkerFinancial.com. Well, does the Bible have a definition of being rich? Not really, but there's one particular person in the Bible that's going to describe the feeling of being rich, whether you have money or whether you don't. Interesting stuff. I'll be right back, but I got to get me a cup of coffee. You stay tuned. Why worry about running out of money in retirement when you don't have to? Attend Tony Walker's next free educational workshop, Safeguarding Your Money During Turbulent Times. That's right, the author and creator of The Worry-Free Retirement, Tony Walker, will personally show you how to use, enjoy, and protect your hard-earned money by avoiding the five most common mistakes savers are making with their money and how to avoid them. This free one-hour workshop will begin promptly at 6 p.m. and is being offered at three different locations so you can choose the best location that suits your busy schedule. Louisville on April 23rd, Elizabethtown Tuesday, April 24th, and Bowling Green Thursday, April 26th. That's safeguarding your money during turbulent times with Tony Walker in Louisville Monday, April 23rd, Elizabethtown Tuesday, April 24th, and Bowling Green Thursday, April 26th. This workshop is free, but seating is limited and registration is required, so don't miss out. Log on now to TonyWalkerFinancial.com to register. That's TonyWalkerFinancial.com. As someone who loves golf, I've learned the hard way that owning the best set of clubs is worthless if you don't know how to swing them properly. Money is no different. Having the best financial clubs in the world doesn't get you anywhere if you don't know how to properly generate income for life. I'm financial advisor Tony Walker. Allow me to show you how to get the most out of your money. Log on to TonyWalkerFinancial.com and let's get started. A right, good cup of coffee. Thanks for uh, joining us for the Worry Free Retirement. We're going to talk briefly about the Bible and its approach to this concept of striking a balance between enjoying our money and also protecting it. You know, the Worry Free Retirement really is a three prong approach that I created years ago following the tragic events of 9 11. Prior to that time, again, I was managing a lot of money. Probably 90% of the money I had was in the market for people, everything was great. They fly into those buildings and all heck broke loose. And I decided, hey, I need more of a philosophy. I need more of a structure. I need a process to help savers. That's who I decided to start working with. So I came up with this concept of man, money, and God. Man, which I wrote the book, The Three Personalities of Money. I've got a psychology background from Western Kentucky University. But man is the understanding that we're all wired differently. Uh, kind of like snowflakes, we're all not alike. Everybody has different tastes. Some people might like annuities, some people don't. Some people like the stock market, some people don't. Our, our goal, my job as a fiduciary, is to figure out if you are in fact a saver, that's the three personalities, and then when savers come into the forefront, we work with them on products that suit them. Very simple. The next core uh, ingredient of our uh, components is money. We have to have a basic understanding of money, how money works, opportunity costs, minimizing cost, how to provide guarantees. That's another thing savers want. And my book, Don't Follow the Herd, geared towards that. And then finally, God, I wrote the book, The Worry for Retirement. And in that book, at the very conclusion of the book, as we lay out all the steps to try not to worry about money, we talk about this notion that God is ultimately who we have to place our trust in, that God does not want us to be worried about this stuff. It's a truth I've discovered. It's a truth I still struggle with, quite frankly, but thank God that I realize he doesn't want me to worry. He's got all this covered. He'll do the worrying for me. You know, he's, I read in a book once, uh, Watchman Nee says, you know, God's really not worried about anything. So why are we so worried? He's already got this deal figured out. So, so matter, no matter, and we've got to get to the scripture, no matter how much you have, here's the point, or how little you have, all right, you're not rich. It doesn't matter. The goal is if you can't have contentment in with the money you have, you're not rich, all right? So let's, Paul addresses this. Let's go, Aaron, to 2 Corinthians 12, 9. 2 Corinthians 12, 9. And Paul simply says, look at this verse. My grace is sufficient for you. 
Because what Paul had learned, it was contentment. It was the grace of God, the mercy of God that allowed Paul to deal with, he had good times and he had bad times. If you read Paul, it's kind of like David, but he learned through all those things to be content. And in my view, Paul was rich because of it. So we have God's grace, we have his mercy, and in the end, you can take that to the bank. Now, real quickly, Ephesians 2.14, let's put that up on the full screen here. And 2.14 says that Jesus Christ basically is our peace. So we have God's grace, and then we have Christ as our possession, and we realize he's broken down the barrier between man and God. So the true peace is found through Christ. God has provided all of our provisions. So whether you feel like you got a little or a lot, think about and meditate on that fact. God has supplied all that we need, and with this, he says, you need to be content. Well, right now you might be saying, well, Tony, that's all well and good, and that's great spiritual advice, but brother, i got to put food on the table here. I need some help. And that's why we're here. We are here to help savers worry less about money. We do that by providing guaranteed income. We do that providing some investments through our Charles Schwab platform. But more importantly, we do that by providing personal one-on-one service. I've been in this business 33 years, folks, and I want to help you worry less about money. It's really easy for us to get together. All you do is go to TonyWalkerFinancial.com. You're going to click on that Let's Get Started button. Once there, that information is confidentially sent to our office. We'll follow up with you. We'll set up a no-obligation appointment with myself at either our Louisville or Bowling Green, Kentucky offices. Now, after we have our first meeting, we'll determine if an assessment is necessary. If it is, we'll put that together, again, absolutely free of charge. You'll be able to review that with me or one of my staff, and then you can take that and think about it. No pressure, no obligation. You can't beat that with a stick. So again, also, oh, I wanted to mention, Aaron reminded me, we have a workshop coming up in April in both Louisville and Bowling Green. It's specifically on how to retire worry-free. Brand new workshop information in April. Again, go to TonyWalkerFinancial.com for the time and location. Well, I hope you've enjoyed today's program. I've enjoyed being with you on the Worry-Free Retirement. You remember, between now and next week, do me a favor. If all else fails, you be worry-free. Make it a good one. Thank you for watching the Worry-Free Retirement with Tony Walker. If you need a safe and simple game plan for your retirement, log on to TonyWalkerFinancial.com and schedule a free, no-obligation meeting with Tony.